Hey everyone, Aaron here and welcome back to the channel. I don't have enough time today to do a, a proper length video, so I'm just gonna do something short and fun and sweet. So what I wanna share with you is a video. Someone sent me a link to this video just this morning, actually. Uh, this is an excerpt from an interview that Joe Rogan did with uh, comedian Whitney Cummings just three days ago. So full credit where credit is due. The original content is not my own. Whoever edited this excerpt was not me. Please don't strike me, bro. Just trying to help get the word out. So anyway, whoever does this channel, whoever did all this work, I thought you did a great job. Thought it was amazing. So let me share it with all of you. I have a hot take on Scientology. <laughs> I drive by the creepy ass Scientology Center in LA now and I'm like, you know what? I'm glad anyone that thinks that's a good idea is in a building, is just, they've got them, they can't, they stay in there. What would the people that think Scientology is a good idea to subscribe to be doing if Scientology was not available to like be the cult that they're a part of? They would like join the Moonies or something. I had um, uh, Miss Cavage's dad on who escaped in a car chase left the compound to, to get away from his son and, and Scientology. And the fact that they still have tax, they don't pay taxes. That's the wildest thing. Is like that guy, L. Ron Hubbard, who created Scientology, was a f science fiction writer who is the most prolific author in human history because that motherfucker never wrote a second draft. His work is so bad. I mean, that was yeah. Hemingway's famous quote, the first draft of everything is shit. <laughs> That is awesome. When the number one podcast in the entire world is not afraid to take a, a massive steaming hot dump on Scientology, the Scientologists in the world really need to stop and ask themselves, what in the world is going on? Scientologists who exist inside the bubble are, are fed a nonstop stream of propaganda about how Scientology is taking over the world, spreading its message deep and far into every nation on earth. Miscavige tells these guys that governments of countries all around the world come to Scientology asking for help, asking for Scientology solutions to solve crime, to solve drugs, to solve just about everything. And it's total fiction. It's total fiction. Scientologists swallow it hook, line, and sinker. To some degree, Scientologists actually believe that the more Scientology is attacked publicly in the press, in the media, TV, movies, newspapers, you know, even people like Joe Rogan, that this is actually a sign of Scientology's expansion and growth. This is part of that cult mindset that is instilled. I mean, Scientology isn't unique in this. All high control groups and cults share this aspect in common. But L. Ron Hubbard said in one of his policies that the more Scientology grows and succeeds, the more it's going to be attacked uh, by the establishment, by the powers that be, by the, by the evil cabal who rules the world. Scientologists, even though the evidence is in front of them that all this is, is bullshit, they truly believe that the more they get attacked like this, the more they must be succeeding. And Joe made reference here to the fact that he interviewed uh, Ron Miscavige Sr., David Miscavige's father. And I saw that interview. That was a really rough interview. Uh, Joe and Ron did not really gel. Ron Sr. has a way of speaking sometimes that I, it, it seemed like he was coming across as being offensive to Joe when it wasn't meant that way. So for example, Ron, Ron Sr. would be telling some sort of a story. Joe would make some sort of observation and Ron would be like, yeah, no shit. And it sounds a little offensive, like, no shit, idiot. But really, that's just the way Ron talks. Like, yeah, absolutely, no kidding. Like, it's Ron's way of showing agreement. Anyway, it was a hard interview to watch. And I remember I was either told by Ron Sr. or the guy who was Ron Sr.'s producer that after that interview, Joe was actually kind of pissed off and had said something about not wanting to ever do anything about Scientology again. And it was either some combination of how rough the interview was. Plus, Joe was getting a lot of shit behind the scenes from Scientology for having interviewed Leah Rev for bringing on Ron Sr. And sadly, in June of last year, Ron Sr. lost what had been a very long battle with cancer. So that's very sad. Ron Sr. had spent the majority of his life working for Scientology. Uh, and in the nine years from when he escaped Scientology's international base in 2012, uh, to the time that he passed in 2021. Um, his contributions were invaluable in exposing Scientology abuse and in exposing the hell that is life at Scientology's uh, international management base, in large part thanks to his son, David Miscavige. Ron Sr. had written a book about how he got into Scientology, uh, the time that he spent in. Uh, of course, it was also about his son, David Miscavige. The book is called Ruthless. If you haven't read it yet, I can't recommend it highly enough. All right, everyone, that's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon.
Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!